so like they mentioned, we're going to be talking about AppScript. Uh, this is Google's original low-code automation platform. You can think about us as Flows from before Flows was cool. And we're here and still the most popular way today for developers, both citizen developers inside of our enterprise customers, as well as folks like yourself, uh, to build applications that customize the Google Workspace experience. Really, the goal of AppScript is to make it as simple as possible for you to augment the power of Google Workspace for whatever use case you need. Why do we think AppScript is great? Well, first of all, it is the infrastructure that we think that makes it the most powerful. It is super easy to deploy, run, execute, and scale, because Google handles all of that for you. Right? The AppScript runtime makes it incredibly easy to write a function, write an add-on, write a chat app, and then scale it to millions of people all of whom can use it every day because you know that Google is going to be able to handle that infrastructure, handle that scale. The second is, over the last 15 years, we've been deeply integrating AppScript into the Google Workspace experience. We have these things called Beans that are a native series of APIs that make it possible to augment the entire Workspace experience, whether you're running in an add-on or you're writing a script that just does certain business processes automatically for you, AppScript's goal is to make it as few lines of code as possible for you to do the most interesting, most powerful things that you want to do. So today, I'm going to be talking about two different areas. We're actually going to go in reverse order so that it's more fun. I have a bunch of series of updates about some upcoming launches in the security and compliance space. Right, We're, we're here in Europe, so I got to talk about compliance. We've got some uh, exciting developments there that should make it easier for our European enterprise customers to use AppScript. But for most of the presentation today, I'm going to focus both on where Gen AI is in AppScript today and a little bit about where we're going over the next six months. So I want to talk to you about how you can leverage our Gen AI APIs, both Vertex and Gemini, to make really op awesome applications inside of Google Apps Script. And the goal here, just like everything else with Apps Script, is to make it as simple as possible for you to do. So I'm going to take you through two different examples, one with the Vertex AI API and one with the Gemini API. Now, how to think about the difference between these two. Vertex is customizable. Vertex has ML ops, it is your more enterprise grade solution. On the other hand, it's going to be more complicated to use. You're going to have to think about what model you're using. Like Faraz mentioned before, we have hundreds of models in the model garden. And that's before you get to the fact that you can do your own fine tuning, you can do your own pre training. Vertex is really where, if you're a developer who is interested in doing either customer-specific customizations, or you're just someone who's kind of an ML geek and likes playing with these things, Vertex is your option. On the other hand, if you're looking for something dead simple, off the shelf, you're more operating in the prompt engineering space, that's why we have the Gemini API. All you need is an API key and really very minimal technical understanding after that. And you can get a very powerful experience out of Gemini without having to do a bunch of the other overhead work. So I'm going to talk you through what it would look like using both of them in AppScript. We're going to see a little bit about the differences, and then we're going to go from there. So starting with Vertex, we're going to start more complicated, go more simple. thought that might be, uh, at least by the end, hopefully make it feel really easy for you. So like I said, Vertex is going to be the more complicated one. But our goal here is still to make it really easy to leverage Vertex inside of Google Workspace. So the goal with AppScript is always, yes, it is a developer platform. Yes, you do have to write code. But it's meant to be as easy as possible to automate things within the Google Workspace interface. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. Instead of writing a full custom app on Vertex, we're just going to write a very small application that leverages a bunch of the existing functionality inside Google Workspace, but still gives you access to tap into all of these advanced customizations that Vertex is famous for. But in the end, the goal is, as you'll see in the example, to unlock the power of Google Workspace, ideally in as simple as one line of code. So the use case that we're going to talk through today is imagine you want to do feedback 
categorization. So you have a Google form that collects customer feedback, and you want to take that raw feedback and categorize it into whatever categories make the most sense to your users. So in this case, we're going to create a trigger in App Script. Triggers, by the way, for folks who are less familiar with App Script, extremely powerful mechanism, again, for leveraging Google's infrastructure. You are not doing eventing yourself. That's something Google is doing for you. You just give us the function to invoke and set the metadata for when we should invoke it, and we will handle that at scale across all of your users. So in this case, we're going to take the feedback like I mentioned. There's going to be a trigger, so every time that the form is submitted, it's going to call this custom function, which in this case uses, again, a custom endpoint that we're running on Vertex so that we can classify the raw user content into one of a set of categories. In this example, it's basically positive feedback, negative feedback, bug, feature request, that type of thing. And then again, for that full life cycle, the goal of App Script is augmenting the functionality of Workspace. So you take a Google Sheet, super seamless, easy to use, very end user facing off the shelf. And in the end, what you're going to do is modify a column inside the standard Google Sheet feedback that you get when a form is submitted. Every form comes with that submission sheet. And we're just going to modify a column using our uh, chips framework to put in the category that is getting classified from Vertex. And so the goal here is to make it as easy as possible in as few lines of code as possible for you to use something as complicated as Vertex. And now you'll see when we get to the Gemini example, you know this absolutely could be easier. <laughs> But again, you're choosing to use Vertex, so you have that full set of customizability. So obviously, you have to specify the endpoint. You have to specify the model. And before we can actually get to this step, you know, you'll have to set all of this up on the Vertex side, obviously. But the goal here is using URL fetch, which is one of the ways that we allow you through App Script to interact with the outside world. You're just going to set up a simple call to take the feedback, send it to Vertex, get Vertex's classification back. And then I'll show you on the next slide how you can actually use that to change the forms and sheets experience using the result from Vertex. So this is setting up our function, get Vertex classification, which will then leverage over here for the trigger. Like I mentioned before, every trigger in App Script is as simple as setting up a trigger and registering it. And then every time the trigger fires, which Google handles, you get this function run and with the information about the event that you need to just quickly execute against that trigger. So in this case, what we're doing, like I mentioned before, is you're getting the spreadsheet. You're sending this new submission to Vertex. You're getting the categories. And then you're just updating the sheet in line, as simple as that, based off the categoriz categorization that Vertex decided. So the whole goal is that you can offload a lot of processing to the AI side and keep your app script really simple. Now, on the Gemini front, it's going to look pretty similar, like I mentioned before, because the goal is that whichever route you go, we try to keep the code, the software development, as similar as possible. You'll just see how Gemini is going to be a little, little bit more straightforward on the setup. But it's the same thing. You're making direct API calls. And the whole goal, again, is to keep this super native to the Google Workspace experience. So in this example, instead of talking about from forms to sheets, we're going to keep it interesting because App Script is used to automate across the entire Workspace suite. So we're still going to use a trigger. But instead of an event trigger, we're going to use a time-based trigger, again, to show you kind of the complexity of what we offer on the infrastructure. We're going to pull actually from calendar. So the trigger is going to be based on when your meeting ends. So this is a calendar trigger event. Go to Google Drive and fetch the notes that are automatically generated from Tate Notes for me. Send those notes to Gemini with a prompt that we've engineered that I'll show you in a second. And based on what Gemini says, Gemini is basically looking for, through all of these raw notes, where are the AIs for me personally? This example is also really cool, too, because 
the goal of AppScript is to make the authentication and authorization steps for everything in Workspace dead simple. So you'll notice that the way that the code's written here, it's completely generic to who the user is. This means that anyone can install this trigger, and they'll start getting this function specific, customized to them using their user context, their permissions, the action items related to them. But you'll notice in the code, there's nothing we've written about figuring out who the user is and explaining that, because AppScript's going to handle all of that automatically. So how's this work? Just like last time, we're going to set up a trigger, except this time, instead of uh, a function-based trigger, like the, what you saw on submission of forms, this is going to be a time-based trigger. Now, there's a little bit more complicated logic here, because we are ensuring that this trigger only runs once per every user calendar event. So there's a little bit of pre-processing there. But ultimately, the goal is the same thing. We're going to get the transcript from Drive. We're going to send it to Gemini. And then it's as simple as just once Gemini comes back with the tasks, we're going to add them to the user's tasks. And you'll notice, like I said, there's nothing here about figuring out who the user is, um, either to tell Gemini or to tell tasks. All of that's handled behind the scenes. So how's the processing actually work on the Gemini side? Like I mentioned when we were comparing with Vertex, now you can kind of tell you know, this is a much more off-the-shelf use case. All you need is a Gemini API key. You know, AppScript has credential management that makes using these credential variables very easy. And then this is the prompt that we engineered. Based on the meeting transcript, extract all specific action items, list each action item on a new line, you know, with a little bit about formatting to make it really easy for tasks. And then you just pass the full text of the transcript. Set up a call post to the Gemini API, and it's as easy as that. Now, I'm sure some of you have been thinking, well, wait, there's actually a, still a lot of bo boilerplate code here, Luke, right? Like, we're still using URL fetch. It's not quite as seamless as what we saw with forms or sheets or calendar, where you're just calling one of those native beans, which is why exactly the next thing that we're going to launch at the beginning of next year is AI advanced services inside AppScript as a native bean. That'll eliminate the boilerplate URL fetch code. The goal there is to make it as simple to interact with Gemini and Vertex as it is to already interact with doc sheets, slides, et cetera, across workspace. Plus, you're going to get a little nice syntactic sugar in the IDE. You're going to get autocomplete. You're going to get suggestions. It's also going to make the typing much easier, because URL fetch is obviously a generic call, and these are going to be specific typed calls. So something to expect. I don't have, they made me put the disclaimer on it because I don't have a specific date for you yet. Uh, but this is something to look forward to in the first half of next year. And the goal, bringing all of this together with AppScript, uh, and just to, you know, because everyone at the summit today has to name check flows. So here's, here's the flows uh, segue. <laughs> the goal here is that as AppScript is kind of the anything goes, wildcard, generic, low code automation platform for a workspace, you're going to be able to pull in the power of Google's AI solutions, whether it's something highly customized with Vertex or something off the shelf with Gemini. And then we're going to have an integration in flows such that you can use AppScript as a new type of action in flows. So any workflow that you're setting up, let's say there, there's not an off-the-shelf action that you want to use. Well, it's as easy as just writing in an app script using the workspace flows manifest so that uh, we know how to access it in flows. And then you can do everything that app script does today plus everything I just showed you on calling our Vertex and Gemini endpoints. So the goal is to really augment what's possible with flows using the anything goes nature of AppScript. And of course, uh, all of this is meant to be reusable. So if you're a professional developer and you want to publish these add-ons, resell these add-ons, that's all possible as well. Now the more exciting stuff, security and compliance. <laughs> so I'm just going to go through a couple of features of that we've either recently launched or that we're going to launch soon, just to give you a better idea of what you can expect on the customer side. 
note, these are all less developer focused. These are really features for our Google Workspace customers. But the reason that we wanted to call them out to you is that they are controls that you're going to need to be able to handle as developers in our ecosystem. So the first one being URL allow listing. I think this will make it very clear why it's relevant. We're giving our enterprise customers the ability to set what URLs are callable, both from AppScript as well as Google Sheets. The goal here is that you can specifically allow list both internal and third-party sites and make sure that your users can't just, say, arbitrarily curl out to random websites like Pastebin that could be dangerous. This will, of course, govern your applications as well. So if you have an enterprise customer, like, say, Google.com, who has specified an allow list, you will get um, rejections if you call something not on the allow list. The error handling is all very straightforward. And you'll see all of that in the documentation associated with this launch. But this is rolling out this quarter. Partial OAuth consent. This has been one of our most exciting ones for developers, I would say. And it's now finally coming to AppScript. What this means is users are going to have more granular control over which OAuth scopes they grant your app. Now, we know this can be a little bit annoying. But the rationale for us is that we think it makes users and admins more likely to install your application if they can give it just the specific scopes that they need. Take, for example, we have a lot of developers who develop things across Sheets, Gmail, et cetera. If you're only using the Sheets functionality, there's no reason to grant the scopes for Gmail and vice versa. And so we see people are more likely to install the application when they know why they're giving the permissions to the application. And then, of course, the last one for Europe. AppScript, at the beginning of next year, is going to be fully governed by your customer's data residency requirements. So if they've set up an EU data region, the scripts will both be stored and executed in region, as well as any of their calls to any other workspace items. So let's say you're automating something with a Google Doc. If that Google Doc is in the US, all of that automation will be done in the US, both the storage and the orchestration, and vice versa for Europe. So yeah, we actually got through that quite fast.